Welcome viewers, I am Mamta. Today we are going to start with the first major psychological disorder which is anxiety disorder. Now when we are doing disorders just remember one thing, do not try and identify with each and every symptom that we are going to consider because some symptoms all of us regularly have but that does not mean that you are having that particular disorder. That is one caution and consideration that you need to remember when we are doing disorders. Okay, starting with anxiety disorders, when we talk about the concept of anxiety, let's say you are going for an interview or for a viva and just remember what kind of symptoms do you experience at that time, the physical symptom that you manifest at that time. Maybe butterflies in the stomach, sweating, you can hear your heartbeat, you can you know, hear your heart pumping, a lot of high blood pressure. There are so many symptoms, vomiting feeling, stomach ache, headache, nausea, these are the feelings of anxiety. Now we need to understand how a normal anxiety is different from anxiety disorder and what are the different kinds of anxiety disorders that we need to consider. So anxiety in general is a diffuse, vague, unpleasant feeling of fear and apprehension. That is what anxiety is all about. So when somebody is anxious as we use normally, it is a very unpleasant feeling, a lot of discomfort the person experiences. It is not a very clear feeling. The person doesn't know why it is happening and what is happening. It's very mixed feeling that is happening. And it's a lot of fear and apprehension. A lot of worry is there. But at the same time, here it's a normal anxiety in a particular situation which evokes this anxiety. It could be any threatening situation where the normal response of worry and apprehension is there. Again, the physical symptoms are the same. We are talking about sweating, we are talking about palpitations, choking feeling, nausea, vomiting, dehydration, diarrhea, sleeplessness, all these feelings, fainting, all these feelings are there with anxiety. Now whenever it is at its extreme where it develops into a debilitating problem or a problem which is so incapacitating that you are not able to follow your daily functioning. So just refer to the four D's where anxiety becomes a problem, the four areas are considered. Now anxiety as such is comprising of five major kinds of disorders under it. First is known as generalized anxiety disorder. Now generalized means the anxiety is generally there in all situations. This is a prolonged vague fear that has no object. So here there is no such object or a stimulus on to which the anxiety is attached. It's a very generally occurring feature which is there in every situation. For instance, a housewife who is working at home, a homemaker, she is working the whole day, starting from the morning, sending the children off to sending the husband off, staying at home or maybe doing something constructive and then coming out to the evening, suppose somebody gets late, the children get late to home. Now there's a lot of restlessness, a lot of fear, a lot of worry. In general, right from the morning till the end of the day where she is working, there is no such main object but it is there in every situation. So a lot of restlessness she experiences, a lot of worry is there, a lot of hypervigilance is there. Hypervigilance is scanning the environment for some object of which can create a problem of danger and also a lot of motor restlessness is there. So she is all the time restless. In the mind there is so much worry that something wrong might happen. What, why hasn't the children come on time? Why have they got late? Something wrong ha might have happened to them. These are the general thoughts which are there in the mind of the person. So this is a generalized anxiety disorder which is normally the first stage after which the other categories are developing. We have the second one which we call as a panic attack. Now panic as the name suggests is a sudden surge in anxiety. It's like anxiety at its peak. Now for instance when you're sitting down to read your question paper, suppose you start looking at the questions. Suddenly you start getting into the feeling of terror, sudden terror where your anxiety is at its peak because the moment the thoughts come, I don't know this particular answer, now I don't know this particular answer, automatically you get into the panic mode. So when the panic button is pressed, automatically the physical symptoms are at its high. So at that particular moment, all the physical symptoms are at its peak. It's a terrorizing moment, it's a paralyzing situation where the person can hear the heartbeat but the person starts having all these physical symptoms of dizziness, of fainting, of you know a lot of where the sweating increases, a lot of 
headache can be there sudden throbbing headache can be there there is a lot of fainting spells at that time so there are so many physical symptoms at that particular moment where the terror situation arises we next have what we call as the phobias now phobias as such when we talk about are basically different from a normal fear see suppose i am scared of a particular animal your child plays a your let's say friend plays a prank with you and he gets a rubber snake and throws it at you you'll obviously scream and shout because you'll be scared this is a normal fear but if you are scared of something to the extent that it is so irrational it is so exaggerated that you're not able to follow on your normal daily functioning that is where this becomes an extremely irrational fear different from a normal fear which paralyzes you so phobia is basically specific phobia one we call it specific is a particular object like in gad there was no object to which our thoughts were attached in phobia there is always a particular object a specific object it could be for instance somebody has a fear extreme paralyzing fear of blood now this particular child the moment he opens up a book which has a red car in it that red color triggers off the phobia now he says i love cars but at the same time the moment i see the red color the blood phobia triggers so that is so incapacitating that he is not even able to look at the color red so this is where the normal functioning gets affected it could be animal related fear also where you are scared of a particular animal for instance somebody is scared of the snake is not able to be in the line of that snake because he is so much scared that something will happen it could be darkness fear it could be fear of heights that people are not able to board an aircraft because they have a fear of height somebody not able to lift uh, take the lift again that's a big fear so depending on it could be water phobia somebody not even able to get into water because of the water phobia it can be having any specific object the second category of phobia that we have is a social phobia where we are talking about how a person is trying to avoid and escape other people so a person is not comfortable being with others being in a party so they normally avoid going out now again if you look at it it's not a very healthy scenario where you're not going out let's say to a wedding you're not going out to attend a party or a get together because you are scared of people you get conscious you don't know what to talk to them now here it is not just a normal introverted mechanism or somebody who is shy it is a problem where every situation which is surrounding with people you are uncomfortable there is so much discomfort in the mind that you end up avoiding that particular situation by giving up some excuse that is a social phobia then we have agoraphobia agoraphobia is basically the fear of new situation so any unfamiliar situation in which you have to deal with that you are not very comfortable so fear of being in an unusual situation suppose a person is driving and going to the market which is a new market now this is a very unfamiliar situation the person is not very comfortable the fear is so much which paralyzes the person the person feels that something wrong will happen if let's say the irrational thought that if i get a heart attack in that situation how will uh, i come out how will i you know open up the door and move out who will help me i'll be all alone so the such people are not able to step out of home and they're not able to go to any new situations because every day we get new situations and such people are not able to adapt normally to such situations which are unfamiliar that is why it develops into this particular category of phobia next category that we have is ocd the fourth one which is a very common aspect of anxiety disorders obsessive compulsive disorders obsessive refers to preoccupation with certain thoughts those thoughts that you are not able to prevent the inability to stop certain irrational thoughts you know those thoughts are not logical not healthy not going to happen but the pattern of thought is such that it keeps on recurring creating itself and you are not consciously able to stop it even if you know it is not right even if you know it is not going to happen for instance a priest who is let's say shaking hands or giving prasad to a particular person is going and washing his hands now he knows that it is not right every time he gives the prasad he goes and washes his hands or a particular person is spitting 50 times and then moving ahead taking the next step now how healthy it is or a certain person you know let's say he has a newborn baby and he's going and touching a particular board and then coming back with the thought that 
if i go and touch that board 50 time my child is not going to fall ill now such thoughts are the obsessive thought patterns it could also be a situation where a person is putting on all the rings for different religions or different subjects trying to accomplish certain goals because he has this fear that if i take out that particular ring something wrong is going to happen so thoughts which are no, you're not able to prevent from the from you to follow those thoughts those thoughts are obsessive thoughts so obsession is a particular preoccupation with a particular thought which you're not able to avoid second part of it is compulsion which is actually a forceful action that you do so with the thought there's a behavior the thought was the obsession and the behavior is the compulsion so both of them most of the time happen to go together because the moment there's a thought there is an impulse to act out that thought also if you do not act out there is this irrational thought that something wrong will happen so it forces you to act out that particular thought which is ocd being preoccupied with certain thoughts and acting out certain behaviors now this is there in certain professions also if you look at it a clerk in the bank who is counting the notes again and again he is a kind of a perfectionist who is constantly trying to keep a count in a check or somebody constantly going back and checking has he shut down the gas stove or the lock in the home that is again a tendency which is compulsive that because you do not remember those thoughts by interfering you go and check so counting washing checking all these are aspects of compulsive behaviors last category of anxiety disorders that we have is ptsd a very common disorder again post traumatic stress disorder now most of the time after a particular incident happens for instance tsunami victims they are suffering from ptsd so after a major catastrophe after a major traumatic situation for instance a mother gets to know that her child after exam had gone out on a highway and despite her telling not the uh, the child not to go he went and then she gets a news that the child is no more because he was driving so fast getting a high enjoying and on the long wrong lane and a truck hit the car and the child died on the spot now this mother will experience the aspect of ptsd because this trauma is not very easy for the mother to take it's extremely shocking and because of this shock she goes into the traumatic situation resulting in a disorder called ptsd this has symptoms like recurrent dreams it has symptoms of recurrent thoughts the mind is stuck up in that time where she was telling this child not to go because now all those thoughts are in the mind that my child is safe he is fine nothing of this sort has happened this is a denial phase where the person is constantly having recurrent thoughts and scary dreams nightmares after that particular trauma so any particular incident happens which is very traumatic it could be a natural calamity or it could be a particular let's say robbery in the family or some murder that the person experiences all of that leaves a very strong impact in the mind of the person resulting in flashbacks those even those situations are constantly repeated so flashbacks traumas nightmares a lot of stress a lot of memory loss the person is disoriented the person is not able to speak the person is emotionally numbed he's having nightmares he's not able to know and react to different situations doesn't know what is happening around is so much lost and withdrawn that is what is ptsd let's move on to the next category of disorders which is dissociative disorders dissociative as the name suggests is a dissociation or a split or a severance between the idea and the emotion so the thought and the feeling are split up there is a major change in the identity of the person there is an alteration in the consciousness level of the person that is what is dissociation or dissociative disorders and there are four kinds of dissociative disorders first is dissociative amnesia amnesia as the name suggests is a memory loss now this can be extensive that is can spread on to general all life situations of the past or the present or it can be selective a particular period of life is erased from the mind the memory loss is there but there is no organic damage that is there is no biological head injury or biological structural problem but it is due to stress or psychological reasons second we have is dissociative fugue where a person travels away from home and takes on a new identity because of a stressful situation for example a person suffering from financial problem 
suddenly vanishes and seven years later he is found somewhere else. He was a different person starting a new life, a new name, a new identity without having any memory of the past. Very, very strange but very, very true where the person has a total memory loss of the past and therefore goes on, travels to a new place, starts off a new identity. Third, we have multiple personality, a very contrasting, a striking disorder where different personality splits are there within the same person. A lot of memory gaps. For instance, one split takes over in a dominating situation, the other takes over in a very stressful situation and the two splits are not aware of each other. So the person will not remember what that person did last night or what the person ate. If the person doesn't like coffee and sees the coffee mug lying there, change in handwriting, so many inconsistencies are observed where multiple splits in personality are there. We call it dissociative identity disorder also. Last one is depersonalization, which is a very dreamlike state, a very unreal, surreal state, where the person feels uh, that, you know, the world is very mechanical and the person is out of the body and the person feels that he is observing everybody out of the body and the feeling is a dreamlike feeling where everything is happening, but the person doesn't feel a connect with the self. So the person is acting out but the person is not able to connect the self to the environment. That is derealization or depersonalization, the last category. Let's summarize, we understood the anxiety disorders coming back to the dissociative disorders to understand two major kinds of disorders. That's about it for today. Thank you.